video was about the last Airbender movie and why I hate it and why it sucks. And I had to watch that movie twice just to make that video, so I'd really appreciate it if you went and checked it out if you haven't already. But while I was watching that movie twice, I just kept thinking like, how did this get to be here? Like, how did this happen? It's so bad. Like, I can make a better movie than this. And her bad idea. So I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. I am going to rewrite the last Revenger movie because I love to suffer. <laughs> Alright, let's set the record straight first. There is a lot that goes into making a good movie. Obviously there's good writing, there's casting, directing, acting, like cinematography, costume, set design, score, like there, there's so much that goes into making a good movie. But in my opinion, I think the base of all of that is the screenplay. If your screenplay is lacking in some way, it doesn't matter how good everything else that you slap on top of it is, the movie will be lacking as a whole because the screenplay is not as good as it could be. This movie happens to have a terrible screenplay and it also happens to have everything else on top of it be also terrible. So I guess I'm just trying to right the first wrong, which was the atrocious writing. I'm not saying like just because I'm making a in my opinion, a better version of the screenplay that this movie would magically be amazing and perfect. Like, like, no, obviously there's a lot of stuff that goes on top of it after the screenplay, but I'm just trying to strengthen the base at least. And I'm also trying to show you that this can happen. Like you can make an adaptation for Avatar in a movie form and have it not be utter ass. At least I hope that's what I'm gonna prove. I could also prove that I'm just a terrible writer and that I suck. But first I have some ground rules. Number one, runtime. This movie is an hour and 45 minutes long. And in my opinion, that's not long enough. For a whole new fantasy world, an hour and 45 minutes is not long enough. I mean, just look at, look at like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, like. All of those movies in both of those franchises, none of them are under two hours long. Some of them are even like two and a half hours, almost three hours long. And there's, there's a reason for that. When you're setting your story in a big fantasy world like that, there needs to be time. And time is one of the things that's hard to come by when you are writing a film. I'm gonna say that my minimum runtime is two hours, 120 pages, and that my maximum is two and a half hours, 150 pages. I feel like anything past two and a half hours is gonna be kind of pushing it, seeing as Avatar is still like meant for kids and I want the movie to still be as geared to kids as possible. Unlike Netflix, which we won't get into that. Don't age up the characters. That's a bad idea. Don't. Please don't. Imagine when Netflix comes out with their version of Avatar, it's like actually good. Like I don't think it will be, but that would be so funny if it was. And number three is, that's not three. And number three is I have a week to do this because Honestly, the 2010 movie feels like it was written in a week, so I'm gonna see if I can do something better in also a week. Today is Monday, which means I have until Sunday to do this, so let's get crack a lack in. I feel like the best place to start with this is to read the screenplay for the 2010 movie, um, but I couldn't find it. And I have a feeling that they're just trying to wipe it from the internet forever. So the only thing that I found was a transcript of the movie on Avatar Wiki, and I guess that's the best we're gonna get. So. I'm gonna read that and then I'll check back in. One hour later. That was bad. <laughs> I realized that I've now technically sat through this film three times and that it's far too many times for a single person to subject themselves to this crap. I'm just gonna add some glitter to my nails while we chat for a bit. Oh yeah, the transcript was bad, but what were we expecting? I recently rewatched this show and it was great. <laughs> of course it was. Um, but I realized that the reason that it's quite difficult to adapt this series into a film is because it's rather disjointed. And what I mean by that is that for book one especially, each of the episodes is pretty separate from each other. They all have their own stories. They all have their own like beginning, middle, end. They have their own arcs. So they are their own self-contained narratives within the larger narrative. Of course, they're still connected overall through the main plot, which is that Aang, Katara, and Sokka are trying to get to the Northern Water Tribe so that Aang can learn waterbending and the main conflict is that Zuko and Zhao are trying to capture them. It's the main story so some of the episodes are going to be more integral to the main plot than others but overall they're still connected. Overall they're connected but each episode is kind of like its own little side story and so when you're trying to take 20 episodes, 10 hours of content that has 
it's a mix between being really integral to the main plot and being semi less integral to the main plot. It's hard to be able to weave all of those stories together to create a coherent cohesive story and tell that in a shorter period of time. The movie basically took out anything that wasn't integral to the main plot um, and it kind of hurt it. I get why they did that because it's definitely easier to tell a story that way but it also was dumb. So when I rewatched the show I was taking notes and I was trying to see like what plot points and what set pieces could I possibly link together so that I can create an easier flow for a movie. Another thing about the show is that in terms of live action adaptation, a movie was never the way to go for it. The way that the series is built, it's really meant to be a series. And I feel like if they wanted to make a live, ad live action adaptation, then a series would have been the more, the smarter decision to make. Of course, Netflix is not making it a series and I don't think it's gonna be good, but that's neither here nor there. So yeah, basically, Time is of the essence when you were writing a film and so I've been trying to see what little plot points could I possibly link together. Yeah, I'd have to like change it a little bit from the show but I'm not gonna make huge egregious changes like the movie did. I'm trying to see what could I possibly make come together so that I can make this story flow easier when it's shown in a, in a movie format. Alright, I've gotten to the point where Katara and Aang are having the conversation about going to the Northern Water Tribe so that they can learn waterbending, but what I really wanted to talk about was the beginning. So obviously Katara's monologue is iconic, right? And so I don't know what to do with it. On one hand, it is kind of exposition-y, I could probably work this information in in a different way, but on the other hand, it's iconic. <laughs> and I feel like if this was to be an actual film, then Avatar fans would go and, and see it, right? And so this would be kind of really awesome to see on the big screen. And it it's what people love and it's what people would expect. So part of me wants to keep it in just like that, but I don't know, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going with this and I'll come back to this and figure out what to do with it. Y'all ever just forget where you put your dust jacket? Cause that's, that's happening to me. <laughs> I just, I just finished this, but I have no clue where the dust jacket is. Uh, stand by. I found it. <laughs> It's Tuesday, I don't know if I mentioned that, but I just finished writing Act 1. I think I was pretty true to the source material for the most part, so I'm super proud of myself. I was thinking I might have to cut some stuff and like change it around for runtime reasons, but I mean I finished Act 1 and we're only at page 31, so I think that's pretty good. 31 pages, that's around 31 minutes of runtime. Maybe slightly more, seeing as we do have some action sequences. But also, there are some, some pretty fast conversations, so it'll probably balance out and be just around half an hour. I think that as I get into Act 2, I'm definitely gonna start overwriting. That's one of my big crutches, is that I overwrite like nobody's business. And so I really hope that doesn't happen because I don't want to have to go back and cut things out, especially since I am already trying to craft this story and make it coherent with all of these little side adventures, and having to cut stuff out afterwards is only going to make things harder. But yeah, I'm going to keep going. We are about to meet Zhao, and we're going to get a sick Agni Kai. It's Wednesday. I wanted to talk about how I'm going to tell Aang and Zuko's backstory. In the show, it's told in one episode. I think it's like episode 12-ish. Uh, it's called The Storm, one of my favorite episodes. That episode is great because not only do we learn about their backstories, but it also draws a really fantastic parallel between Aang and Zuko. It shows us that they aren't as different as we may think. Essentially, they're both kids that have had really terrible, traumatizing things happen to them at young ages that now inform their choices and their decisions. And we can see, hey, they're kind of just two sides of the same coin. In the show, the backstory took up the whole episode, which was like 22 minutes long, and I can't just, you know, dump all the info all at once in 22 minutes, because A, info dumps, they suck. The movie did an info dump and it was terrible, I hated it. And also, 
in a film, you don't have time for anything. So there is no way that I can just spend 22 minutes talking about that. So instead, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to split up the story into different sections. I'm still going to keep that parallel because it's fantastic. It uh, continues on throughout the rest of the series and I want to also, I want to keep that because it's, it's so great. But I'm going to split up the story. So I think I'll do it in three parts. The first part for Aang will be when he was playing with the other Air Nomad kids and then uh, the monks told him he was the Avatar. For Zuko, that'll be when he asked Iroh if he could go into the war meeting with them and Iroh let him in. The second part will be Aang uh, not being allowed to play with the other kids because they, they're like, oh, you're the Avatar, you're too powerful, it's not fair. So he feels left out. Uh, and then his uh, bond with Monk Yatso. And for Zuko, it'll be him speaking out at the war meeting and being sentenced to an Agni Kai. The third part will be the last part, and that will be Aang realizing that the monks want to send him away. So he runs away um, into the storm and then has to create the iceberg around himself. And for Zuko, it'll be him realizing that it's his father that he has to fight, uh, refusing to do so, being burned, and being ordered to find the Avatar. And I'm going to spread all of the different parts out throughout the movie. Because A, I think it's just easier and better way to tell the story than, you know, clumping it all together. And second, it keeps the question of what happened to these characters on the audience's mind throughout the entire movie. So it keeps that intrigue and keeps them drawn in. The first section, I think I'm going to do that when Team Avatar is at the Southern Air Temple. I think it'll make for an easy transition because they're already at the Southern Air Temple. So Aang will already have memories there. And then we can transition into the first part of his memories. The second part, I'm not entirely sure where I want to do this, but I think maybe after they face Heibai and they realize that they have to go to the Fire Sage Temple place. And the third, I think I'll do it when they're at the Northern Air Temple. Also, I was talking about uh, ways that I wanted to try and connect big plot points together. I think one of the, one of the things that I'm going to do is the waterbending scroll. I'm going to have them find that at Kiyoshi Island. I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like maybe if we have the pirates there, because Zuko's going to show up anyway, so they can find the waterbending scroll, get in trouble with the pirates, and then Zuko can come and like try to capture them and then that will create animosity between the pirates and the Zuko which we need for later on because the pirates are a huge reason as to um how Zuko gets attacked later and they think he's dead also for the blue spirits I want to connect that to the fire sages temple so in the show the temple actually starts collapsing but they manage to get off it before it completely just collapses into nothing but in my screenplay I think what I want to do is I want to set the whole thing during the big bad storm when the temple collapses, I want Katara and Sokka to be separated from Aang so that Katara and Sokka can uh, escape, but Aang will collapse because he's just gone into the Avatar state. He was channeling Roku, so he's like really weak now. And then Zhao can capture him, which then can lead to the Blue Spirit freeing him. And Katara and Sokka can't go after him because they get sick because of the storm. I don't know if any of this is going to work, but it's what's happening in my head right now. So I'm just going to take a chance and put it to the page. Hey, voice over me. It's Thursday and I realized two things. One, I'm overwriting and two, I need to get a move on. So yeah, I'm definitely overwriting. I just finished the Kyoshi Island sequence and I'm already at like page 60, which is like an hour into the movie. <laughs> So first, filling a page in screenwriting is pretty easy. It actually goes fast, especially when there's a lot of dialogue. Like, I swear, you can fill a whole page with just like eight pieces of dialogue. So yeah, pages go by really, really fast. And I keep telling myself that these conversations are also gonna go by fast when it's actually in like the movie, when the actors are saying them. So we're not really an hour into the movie. But also action tends to take more time than it looks on the page, so it'll probably balance out, but uh, we'll, you know, we're just gonna keep going and try not to worry about that too much. 
I'm thinking I'm gonna have to cut some stuff I have planned, but we will see. Number two, I need to get a move on. Like I said, it's Thursday and I only just passed Kyushu Island. So obviously there's a lot more left of this story. So I really need to kick into high gear if I wanna get this done by Sunday. And it's weird too, cause for the last few days, I feel like I've been writing for the majority of the day. And yet somehow I'm still only here. Anyway, <laughs> that's my little spiel. I really need to get back to it. Thanks for hanging with voice over me. It's Friday at 10.52 p.m. and I've just finished the Blue Spirit sequence. It was probably one of my favorite sequences to write, maybe because it's, again, one of my favorite sequences from the entire show, so of course I love it so much and I hope I did it justice. I pretty much stuck to what happened in the show. The way we got there is a little bit different as I explained before how, uh, what's his face? Zhao <laughs> captured him after the Temple of the Avatar. It was just easier to connect those two plot points together. We're we're starting to get to the home stretch right now. All I have left is I'm gonna do the fortune teller, uh, Zhang Zhang, and Zuko using that Shirshu tracker. That's gonna be like a simultaneous thing that's happening. So that's gonna happen, and then I'm going to reveal the last section of Zuko and Aang's backstory, and then we get to the Water Tribe. I will say that I am at page 93, which it's not looking too good for the runtime. I know I'm gonna need at least 30 pages at the Water Tribe. That's like half an hour, maybe even 40, 45. So I'm gonna try and get this little bit with the fortune teller, Zhang Zhang, and the Shirshu tracker done pretty quickly because I'm also gonna need time with the final section of the backstory. It's just that conversations, they take up so much space. And I know that they're not actually going to be that long when actors are saying them, but it's making me anxious. Currently, I'm not sure if I'm keeping the pacing uh, in a way that actually makes the most sense. Sometimes I feel like things are moving at breakneck speed, which again, there's so much that happens in this story that a movie is never the right way to go for an adaptation, but since we're doing it, since I'm trying to prove a point here because I'm just so salty about the 2010 adaptation, we're doing it. I really hope this doesn't suck. <laughs> Imagine I finish it and I just read it back and it's actual trash. Like, I would actually burn it, throw it in the garbage can, have the garbage men take it away. I guess we'll find out. I am slowly going insane <laughs> It's frozen! It's Sunday, aka deadline day. I am getting down to it. Last night I just finished off the Zhang Zhang section with the Shirshu and the fortune tellers. I actually had to change that up a bit. I made Zhang Zhang's role a lot smaller because I realized I don't have time. <laughs> I just don't have any time. So that's something that I've been having to do throughout the screenplay. I've been having to make changes and cut things out as I'm writing because I realized, wow, I really don't have time for this. Originally, I was gonna have the earth bending scene. I was gonna have Boomy too. And I decided I needed to cut both. I was sad about cutting 
them too because the earthbending scene was great for Katara's development and it really gave her a character moment that everybody loves. And I hope that the way that I've been characterizing her already is going to be good enough that the audience actually knows what she's like and what she stands for. I also cut Boomy which was sad because I'm trying to treat this screenplay as if it was going to be the first in a trilogy and so Boomy comes back in both books two and three. So I wanted to introduce him in this one because that's how it was in the show and also it would set him up for the later movies. But then I thought to myself, he doesn't have the biggest role in this book. Team Avatar only goes to Omashu and then they like do all his little challenges and like that's it. He has a much bigger role in book two. That's when Omashu is actually taken over by the Fire Nation and he's imprisoned. That's where we meet Azula, Mei, Tai Li. So he is a lot bigger in book two and a lot more important and so I feel like we could we could introduce him in book two in the next movie. Is it not gonna be as good as a show? But then again, nothing can match the level of the original show, right? But it's better than nothing. So I ended up cutting Boomy as well. I cut down Zhang Zhang's section to instead of Aang having an extended period of time with him and trying to learn from him. Zhang Zhang saves them from Zuko and Zhao and lets him know like, oh, you need to rein yourself in if you want to learn firebending. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to include Zhang Zhang too because he also comes back in book three because everybody is part of the Order of the White Lotus, but I didn't have time for Aang to actually learn from him, so I just gave him a little save the heroes role. I just finished writing the last section of the backstory, and this was the section that broke my heart the most because, I mean, it had Aang drowning almost and then creating the iceberg and then Zuko being attacked by his father and told, like, he's banished. It was actually kind of sad. Overall, I definitely think I'm having the most fun writing the backstories. The way I'm writing it, it's flashbacks, but they are connected to each other. So Aang is narrating occasionally over it, and we see scenes from Aang 100 years ago and then Zuko three years ago, and it's like trying to draw those same parallels. We're basically in the third act now. We're almost at the Water Tribe, um, but in news of runtime, I'm on page 118. <laughs> so basically I've hit the minimum runtime mark, and we are not even at the water tribe. <laughs> so I think I'm definitely gonna go over 150 pages. We, I don't wanna talk about it. This has just turned into me asking myself how many time lapses I can fit in one video. And the answer's a lot. Da, 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 da. Look at that! It's over. It's done. I did it. <laughs> this is so crazy. I, I did it. It's done. I am so unbelievably tired. Wow, that took all of my strength to finish. <laughs> Writing an entire screenplay in a week? Zero out of ten. Don't recommend. And I know it's not perfect. It's not the greatest screenplay in the world. There is issues with it. There's some stuff that I really like. There's some stuff that I don't like as much. There's some scenes that I absolutely love that I think would actually be really cool. And there's other scenes that I hate with every fiber of my being. If this was gonna be an actual movie, then I would obviously spend a lot of time going back over it, revising it, trying to edit things out, put things in, see what doesn't work and just changing it to make it better. But this is not gonna be a real movie and this video needs to go up so this is what you get. I did one pass over it for editing. I just read it from top to bottom and added some things. There's definitely some stuff that maybe isn't developed as good as I want, namely the progression of the water bending. I really kind of only put one montage scene of Katara and Aang practicing water bending um, and then like just didn't have anything else. Obviously during the fights I tried to make it clear that they were clearly improving and getting better, but I'm not gonna lie, it's not the greatest. In fact, there's a lot of stuff that's not super fantastic, mind-blowing, amazing about it, but I think it works. It is, in fact, 167 pages long, so I went 17 pages over my limit, but you know what? I don't care at this point. It's done. It's a thing. Having said and done all of that, I can say at least in my opinion, that it is 100% better than the 2010 version. <laughs>
just my opinion. Maybe I'm biased. I'm definitely biased, but man, I think it's better. <laughs> If you would like to read my final screenplay, there will be a link to the PDF down below. I'm also gonna try and leave a link to a Word document just in case the PDF doesn't work for some reason. The Word document is formatted slightly differently. It takes up more pages, but whatever, it works. I'll also leave a link to the Avatar wiki page that has the transcript of the 2010 movie. So if you wanna read that too, and then read my screenplay, if you wanna put them side by side, compare them, make a Venn diagram, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just honestly so proud of myself, man. That was both fun, but also very draining. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, comment down below. Let me know, did you read my screenplay? What do you think of it? Uh, were there things that you liked, disliked? What would you have done differently? You know, just your general thoughts. Also, if you want me to do this again for books two and three, I'd be open to it. Just let me know. If you enjoy this sort of content and you want to see more of it from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I make videos every Friday. I'm also on platforms, so if you want to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and Letterboxd, those links will be in the description down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye